All right, everyone, this is Dan Reichert again with part two of our super replay of Link to the Past. I'm joined by Andrew Reiner for the yo, segment. Yo, 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 yo. How's it going? I'm doing well, actually. I'm surprisingly in a good mood. Yeah. First time in maybe the last two years. All right. Well, we're going to play this game. Are you a fan of this? Uh, I was. I was a huge fan. Uh, in fact, I remember the day I picked it up at the store, uh, and uh, it was a software, et cetera. And I brought it home and uh, started playing it, and I could not believe the rain effect. I thought it was, like, the coolest effect ever. So I called two of my friends over just to see the rain effect, <laughs> and unfortunately, they did under they did not understand what was so cool about it. But it just blew my mind, and that was just, like, one of the little things in this game that, uh, that stood out. Uh, I, the entire game, I just thought, was brilliant. One of the best ever made, easily. Yep. I, I put it actually firmly as my number one of all time. Um, I've never enjoyed a game like this before. Um, and me and Tim actually talked about it. We both had the same feeling with the rain. Like, you know, there's just something about that. You never saw mm-hmm. anything like that on NES. And, uh, you know, the, the early days of the Super Nintendo really had stuff like that. Like with uh, Super Mario World, the first time you saw that giant bullet bill. You know, that was really cool. Um, All right, this, that right here going to the light to dark world, that seemed normal at the time. Like when I did that right here, I was kind of like, whoa, what's what's the Energizer Bunny doing in my game? I did not remember him turning into the rabbit. Yep. If you do not have the Moon Pearl, you uh, you turn into the rabbit. And we are going to get it, get the uh, Moon Pearl in this dungeon here. What dungeon is this? Is this two? This is the third, third one. Okay. So if you remember right, in the... You guys the... flew through the first segment. I, yeah, I, I know my way around this game. I played a lot of it. Oh, man. You know you got to avoid those guys. Oh, okay. I knew I was doing something wrong. All right. Look at this, though. I can trick this guy. That. No danger. That was pretty slick. So, basically, you have to do the Eastern Palace, where you get the Pendant of Courage. You do the uh, Desert Palace, which is the Pendant of Wisdom. And now this one, we're going after the Pendant of Power. Hmm. And then, once you get that, you can get the Master Sword. So, it is a, a battery for the, the rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Oh, and the music. Just classic. Every track. Every track's amazing in this game. And uh, did you know about this one? Tim wasn't uh, familiar with this. I got the uh, the Good Bee. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got. I did everything this game allowed me to do. That is a, it's a single bee that you can get uh, near the lake. And if you let it loose, it will attack everyone on screen. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. Yep, yep, absolutely. We were talking about how much of a pain these rooms were. We just had to run around and wait until they were all done. All right, so he had pink hair. Why didn't that carry over into the Nintendo 64 version? There was always weird stuff with Link. Like, it looks like he has green eyebrows in the, in the first one. I don't know if it's actually supposed to look pink, because, you know, in the instruction manual, it, it looked blonde. I kind of like a uh, weird punk rock adolescent <laughs> Link. Yeah. Yeah, people wanted him to be, you know, like this mature version. They didn't like the... Uh, the cell shaded version that came out with Wind Waker. I think they should go back to this version. That'd take people by surprise. We've, we've talked about Wind Waker uh, recently, and, you know, a lot of people in the public, like, I remember when they made that announcement. I remember it was in Game Informer, I saw the reveal of the new art style, and I worked at GameStop, and I remember customers just talking to me and being like, oh my god, this is terrible, what are they thinking? Like, I'm not going to buy this. But I liked it a lot, and I think you were saying that around the office here, people kind of, they, they dug the new style? Absolutely, yep. I mean, every game was kind of, at the time, you know, people don't realize, most of us play everything, you know, like, at the time, there was so many games trying to capture the realism in games, Uh, you know, you had the Res Evil remakes and all that stuff coming out, and it was just nice to see something different, you know, see a fresh art style and not something that was just trying to recreate what you see out in the real world. So yeah, Wind Waker would have been 03, is that correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that was kind of early on in the days of Xbox and GameCube and a lot of realism. Yep. Halo had been out a couple of years. Yep. And I mean, we're still going for that, you know, like pretty much every game's trying to do that. Well, it, it did really well for the uh, the DS incarnations of the series because, you know, it they don't want it to look realistic on DS. I mean, mm-hmm. They wouldn't be able to handle it with the hardware, and I think that kind of cel-shaded style looks great on uh, Spirit Tracks. Absolutely. Too bad Spirit Tracks isn't uh, better than it was. Yeah, I, I'm actually working through it right now, and uh, I'm kind of feeling the same way. 
it just, I don't know, it just felt too formulaic. Yeah, and I remember when you were reviewing it, you told me, it, you know, because it was on tracks, it took away that feeling of exploration yep. that the series has. And, and that's something I loved about Wind Waker, was just how open that world was. Like, oh, if yeah. you took the time to explore, there was so many secrets in that game. Yep. Collecting all the action figures, oh man, that was so much fun. I, I was telling Tim, one of my big complaints, though, is at the end, it does become that big fetch quest, where it's like, you know, you get to get all those maps and decode it with Tingle. Yep. So that, that got a little tired. You got to know Tingle's entire family. Yeah. yeah. And surprisingly, he's not the weird one. <laughs> <laughs> These pots are invaluable. All right, so these things, remember these? Press those. Yep. So it switches that around. I remember just that subtle plane shift in the background with the dungeon that kind of blew me away, too. Oh, yeah. This is a pain, too, because whenever you hit these guys, it bounces you back. And this level is just filled with these holes, and you have to constantly climb up. So let's try this. I may have brought you down for the right segment, because I know you get great personal joy in making fun of me when I fail at games. And we are going to fight the boss that I have the most trouble with, uh, probably in this dungeon. Uh, so. If it goes anything like those two skeletons you fought, uh, it should be entertaining. Two skeletons? Those two guys that just beat you up at the beginning of this. Oh, okay. This dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the two guys that were just kind of standing there doing their own thing, and you just kind of ran into them? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's my strategy. It works. I haven't died yet. Do you remember the boss of this? No. It is... Well, we'll wait till we get there. We're almost there. The... Interesting thing about this one is, in almost every dungeon, you pretty much have to use whatever item um, you get in the dungeon to fight the boss or to get out or whatever. This one, you can see the uh, you can see the, the treasure chest right up there, but you do not have to get it to beat the dungeon. But it's the moon pearl, so if you don't get it, basically you're going to be a bunny whenever you go to the dark world. So it's pretty much recommended that you pick that one. Man, they should bring that back. Just even if it's just for like one little mini game or something, bring back the bunny and just see you know <laughs> fanboys freak out on that. We were talking about games that always do something annoying like that that just turn you into something useless. Well, there was that. Uh, I don't know if you played the first uh, Mario RPG, the one that Square made. Uh, the Super Nintendo one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There was a point where you like went behind the curtain and you turned into 2D Mario. Right, right. I freaked out. <laughs> I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> So here's what I have to do here. I need to go upstairs, and I need to land on that. So good luck. pretty much guess which one I'm going into. Let's see, we racked up quite a few rupees in our uh, first hour of playing. Rupees? Yeah, yeah. Whatever they had. And, uh, pretty controversial. They're called rupees, not rupees. Right. They're it's currency. the currency in this game. Yeah, it's a different thing than rupees. Yeah. There was a bomb wall there that you missed, too. Oh, well, I'm going back up. I need to get that. Nice job. So I'll head back up there, and we're pretty close to the boss already. We're making pretty good time. We're about an hour and ten minutes in, and uh, almost done with the light world. And I'm sure you guys went over the, the sequence at the beginning with what is believed maybe Link's father, or I the character that dies at the beginning. Oh, oh uh, his uncle. His uncle, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They've never really gone into his family outside of that one character, right? Yeah, no, I don't think... They've ever really shown... Well, his grandma was in Wind Waker at the beginning. This is the boss I'm talking about. You have to hit his, hit his tail, but if he knocks you off, which constantly happens, you have to go back up and basically start the fight again. So the design is you're not supposed... It's not supposed to be constantly falling off. Well, it depends on how good you do. I mean, it's... He starts moving real fast here the more you hit him, and you're going to fall off. We'll see how I do. I've always had trouble. But this guy especially blew me away at just, like, how big this guy was. Because yeah, yeah. NES, you never had bosses like this. This guy's giant. He's got crazy eyes. Yep. Let's see. Oh, God. All right. Nice. That spin attack was pretty handy here. Oh, jeez. He starts going real fast. Oh, God. Like. Oh, boy. This is like scary. five miles an hour opposed to, oh, like, two? Jeez. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, ooh, I still, I still get anxious as hell fighting this guy. Oh god! You're kind of squirming around in your seat. Oh, oh man! God. All right. So basically, all his damage is back now. So, and those hearts I got earlier down here—they're not there anymore. So, I basically have about seven more hearts I can go with here. You got your killer bees. 
I don't think that would work on the I bus. It won't work. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I haven't tried it, but it might be worth it. Oh, that would be funny if I had you get rid of those. Um, yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. Tim, Tim uh, did give me a, a revelation that I had not realized in the dozens of times I've played through this game. Is that the thing I thought was a happy face on people's walls uh, in Kakariko Village is posters of Mario. Oh. Did I not never realize. Picked up it. on that. Yeah, we'll see if we can uh, find one of them in this little segment. So, what did you think of uh, A Link to the Past? Well, we're playing. Or uh, <laughs> what's the what's the Game Boy one? Oh, Link's Awakening. A oh, Link's Awakening. Yeah. Great game. I mean, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, some a lot people, of people say that's their favorite. I, I just don't see that at all. You know what? I honestly, I even liked Jesus. Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. More than that, remember they did the the two that kind of linked together. Those were Capcom, right? Yeah, but I mean, they were. That's really where you're good. riding the kangaroo. Do you get a kangaroo? Yeah, I think you get a kangaroo. Okay. Well, I remember liking those a lot, and I thought it was cool that you could like link them together and fight like the ultra final boss. Oh jeez, I'm about to have a heart attack. Hang on. Got him. All right. Um, so yeah, those were really good. Minish Cap kind of had the same feel, this top down as uh, Zelda. It worked great. Um, I actually really liked all the portable ones. But uh, Link's Awakening, I, I don't really understand the people that say that it's their favorite Zelda. I just I don't think it's up to par with this or Ocarina. No, no. Just in terms of like the dungeon design and stuff like that, this game was just incredible. If you had to say like your top three Zelda's, what would you say? Uh, well, that's a tough question because I always put the original Zelda first. I mean, like I said, my mind was blown when I played this for the first time, but the first time I played the first Zelda, I must have played that game a hundred times. Uh, you know, I could beat that with my eyes closed, and and uh, you know, I did a map in an old issue of Game Informer where I did every, every, uh, every screen in the game, Jeez. put it all together. But I remembered it like it was yesterday, and that was like you know, 15 years ago or something like that. Uh, so I'd say that's probably still my number one. Uh, I'd probably go this number two, and then maybe Ocarina. Uh, but at the same time, man. I have fond memories of all of them, you know, like every single one. Majora's Mask, <coughs> I adored that game. Majora's Mask was just a, I was telling Tim, it was just kind of a ballsy move for the series. It was such a different gameplay mechanic and traveling through time. And I mean, development wise, that had to be really hard to do. And I think they knocked it out of the park. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, Tim and I also, it, it was the one we had not gone back to since it first came out, just because it was kind of rough. It was hard. Um, have you played that since it came out? I haven't. I haven't gone back to that. I, I remember there was, was it GameCube that gave you the pre-order disc? Yes. With uh, the original and Magic Quest or something? What was it? It was Master Quest for Master Ocarina. Quest. There were a couple different give giveaways they did for the GameCube. There's the one where it's just Ocarina and the Master Quest, and then there was the Collector's Edition, the gray box, that gave you Zelda 1, 2, not this one, but it gave you uh, Majora and Ocarina. And this, this part right here just blew me away as a kid. This is one of my all-time favorite game yep. moments. Yep. And, you know, if you read it like this, you don't get to see anything, but you pull out the old book of Medora. Yeah, whatever that means. And you go get your sweet <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. I'll read it like Bruce Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> Still awesome. I, yeah, I think a lot of it is kind of the age you were at when you first played it, because... The first Zelda, I remember growing up and watching my stepdad play it when I was like really, really little. Um, I thought it was really cool, but it was kind of tough for me because I was you know, a little, little kid when that was out. But when this came out, I was about eight years old, and actually probably about seven years old. And I was just right at the right age to really dive into this. And it was still really hard, but I was fascinated by every single thing that happened in this game. So why do you think someone would put a sword out there like that? I don't know. Anyone can come take it. You notice there is a bunch of little uh, decoy swords, though, like that one. So now we have the master sword, and all the fog is gone. These jerk birds are still there, though. And we need to get back to the sanctuary. I love that too, sprinting through the the brush. Oh yeah. Yep. <coughs> all right. I think. Oh, if I remember right, there's a little secret right there. Nice. Yeah. Either a heart piece or like 300 rupees. Yep, heart piece. In a lot of games nowadays, like you want to collect everything, but you don't take the time to look at anything. These games made you want to cut er, cut down every piece of gra grass, look at every little wall, you know, examine everything in it. Yep. Uh, and games have just kind of lost that charm. 
Well, and especially because you know this is before the internet. You couldn't just find out where every head and heart piece was, you know, by opening oh, up the game. Oh, I won't do that. Oh, you don't do that now? No, I refuse. I'll, I'll be stuck on puzzles for hours at a time. Yeah, it, it's different with me. If it's a game that I, I really care about, um, you know, if like a new Zelda or a new Metal Gear or something, I refuse to look at anything. But uh, I, th I think it might be well known around here. I uh, kind of like getting achievements. And so sometimes I'll play games that I'm not too invested in, and I don't really care if I get spoilers. So sometimes I'll look at a achievement guide or something with I that. I won't even bring up the achievement menu. Uh, no, no. Yeah, at the end of a review, I'll take a look at it. But uh, yeah, I, I avoid that stuff whenever I play games. I, uh, I ever since our recent uh, achievement happenings around here, I uh, I started playing Splinter Cell, and it's the first time I played a game in a really long time without looking. You're it's kind of nice. Way, yeah, it's intended to be played. I didn't know how no many spoilers, missions there were. Yeah. I didn't know when it was going to end. So it's kind of nice playing it that way. The thing I like about achievements is, like, let's say I finish a game. I'll go see, like, hey, Dan's playing Splinter Cell. Let me see where he's at in it. What is he? What has he done in the game? Yep. It's kind of cool to see where your friends are at. Yep. All right. So now it's time to actually go to the castle. Ah, uh, the map. Ominous I love the skull. map. Oh, that's great. And I have the Master Sword, which means I get my little laser stuff. So, where, why is he the only one doing anything in this world? <laughs> yeah, everybody is everybody, else is, is everybody else just a coward? Did they get, like, hit by a coward spell, or? Well, I mean, the only, like, non-evil people are, like, tucked away in uh, Kakariko Village, or just random little huts. And there's these evil archers shooting everyone on sight, just walking around. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know. People who they're are trapped in their towns. They can't do anything. Are these guys working for Ganon, or are they just jerks? I don't know uh, who they're supposed to be. So it's up to a pink-haired little, you know, twelve-year-old boy, thirteen-year-old boy to to save the day, and uh, sell illegal mushrooms to witches. <laughs> So do you remember these guys here? These you know, people, guys? people harp on Grand Theft Auto for drug trade and all that stuff, but <laughs> we just saw the first the first one here, and no one talked about it. Well, look what I'm going to get. I'm going to get uh, magic powder. Yeah. There it is. To control your hallucinations so you don't feel like you're a bunny anymore? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Reading into this game the way I never have before. And then watch what they do. Watch what this powder does. You go up to Gumby Guy here. Sprinkle some. Why does that happen? <laughs> Um, Why is he a hot dog with glasses now? What's with the red stuff down there, too? I don't know. Is that his tongue? We'll say that's his tongue. So shocked. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we have our magic powder. And these rocks. These guys are just really bad soldiers. Alright, I think we need to go... Yeah, we'll go down this way. Still can't swim yet. You gotta buy the uh, Zora's flippers for 500 rupees. So what would you rather have? Would you rather have a another game like Ocarina of Time, continuing that series? Would you rather have another full-on console Wind Waker, or would you rather have a classic console version like this? Obviously, Four Swords kind of brought this perspective back and was an okay game, but let's say they they tried to make a spiritual successor to to Link to the Past. I would certainly be interested in playing it. Um, whether I'd want like a new game like this or a new Ocarina type game, it's hard to say because like they kind of did the Ocarina thing with Twilight Princess. I mean, that's basically like a newer Ocarina, and it was awesome. I love Twilight Princess, mm -hmm. but you know, honestly, I think a big part of this is just the nostalgia factor and just the age I played it at. And even if they made like a direct sequel to this, like the way they did Mega Man Nine and Ten, I don't know if it would hit me the same way. But I'd definitely love to play it. It's the classic gamer argument, like, man, they should make more 2D Metroids and, you know, 2D Castlevanias and, you know, there hasn't been, you know, even the the DS versions of, of these games aren't classic in the classic sense, you know what I mean? Most of the They're time, yeah. They're still Wind Waker-like with a different perspective. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they do stuff like, uh, I remember the Game Boy Advance Metroid, uh, Zero Mission and Fusion, those were awesome. Mm -hmm. I like those a lot. Um, but yeah, were, I mean... They were never going to a new one called Metroid Dread, uh, which we found out about uh, through a source we had at Nintendo and said it was awesome. But uh, 
that game has mysteriously disappeared. It was supposed to be at E3 two years ago. Wasn't there actually a hint in Metroid Prime 3 where it's like you would scan something and it would say like Codename yeah, Dread? Yeah, Codename Dread, yep. Yep. Um, These guys are rough. Who knows what happened to that game? Was it supposed to be a 2D game? Yes. Really? Yeah, and they were going to unveil it at E3, and Nintendo doesn't unveil anything unless it's pretty far along, so... Huh. Uh, yeah, it's a shame. I, I was looking forward to playing another one of those. I'm trying to get rid of this bee so I can get this fairy. Oh, great. Thanks, bee. Wait, oh, I... Did I get the fairy? Yep, yeah. I did. Now you got a little friend with you? I have a feeling as soon as I go in this door, he's going to leave. <coughs> we were talking about the mystery light. Like, is that a flashlight? Is that a shield reflecting something? Hmm. Never really understood that. Maybe it's not entirely dark. Maybe that's like your cone of vision. Uh, yeah. Get to these lanterns so I can see. Nah, you don't need to see anything. Now, were you OCD like me about this stuff? And like, I always wanted my boomerang to be the uh, selected weapon? Yes. Okay. Yep, absolutely. I think I'd rather have... Um... Another game like Twilight Princess, but, you know, apply the Majora's Mask, uh, Mario Sunshine design of doing something completely different. Yeah. But just using those mechanics. Um, you know, Twilight Princess, like you said, great game. Uh, but I, I want to see more in this universe. Like, we were just talking about uh, his uncle and his grandma, and let me know Link a little better, you know, Give me a chance to, to understand who he is as a character. That's, but then again, maybe maybe part of his his allure and what makes him a great character is not knowing anything about him. Yeah, and he never talks. I mean, he yeah. doesn't really have a big backstory. I mean, they say it's a different link every time. I don't know. How I feel about that? I don't like thinking that. Yeah. It's like I mean, if they said it was a different solid snake every time, that would be like, oh no, I want to think this one guy did all this cool stuff. I don't know why they would restart every time. I think the laser sword should help me a lot here. Laser sword? Yeah, whatever you want to call it. It's magic, man. Magic. There are lasers in this game. There's those weird fire hydrant guys that shoot lasers at you. Do they spin in weird circles like that? Um, no, not quite. Hmm. So that the circle effect might be like, uh, I don't know, magic? I think it's magic, yeah. <laughs> Probably magic. <laughs> Look at that. They had a nice tactic there. They flanked you, yeah. but you uh, you blocked everything. Yep, with the uh, the tiny shield. And just the amount of enemies in this game, like, you know, you see games now, like you know, a new Ninja Gaiden comes out, and they're like, oh, there's 12 different types of enemies or 15 types of enemies. This one, there's so many enemies that there's all these guys that you see once in the world. Like, those spear guys we saw earlier, they're only in this dungeon. There are so many different types of enemies in this game. I think along the way in making games, designers felt like everyone would have to act differently. Like if there was a different design, it'd have to be, they'd have to have a different functionality. And that limited the number you could create. Why can't we have like four different designs for like a spear guy or, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, well, and look at this eyeball bat thing here. It behaves just like the normal bats and the birds, but you know, it's a different look. So mixes like it up Like Alan Wake, I think had four enemy types through the entire game. Really? Yeah. But, I mean, it worked for that game. This. Jeez. I'm, yeah, why would I even waste time with these guys? Because uh, you're not very good. Oh, okay. Here we go. Like, back. if you just would have defeated those guys, you would have got the Triforce, and the game would be over. Oh, I think I've cleared that room, and I didn't get the Triforce before. Hmm. Oh, God. This is precarious. See it. Wily Coyote shuffle. He was just trying to stand there. Boop. Didn't look like they cared you were in that room. <laughs> yeah, if they don't notice, you can kind of like tap your sword on something like this, and they'll turn around. Nice little touch. Whoa. I want to see if you know this. Now, did do you, you remember really this fight at all? name yourself Dan? I'm sorry. I did. Oh. I, I got yelled at by Tim about that. Too. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll let Tim's... No, I, I'm going to yell at you for this too. <laughs> But first, right. first, let's watch this epic scene. That's magic, not not lasers. Then that's magic. 
So, the way you beat this guy is you got to bat his magic back at him with your sword. Do you know the kind of secret extra way you can do it? No. I'm going to show you. So, you can also do it with this. I don't think that's going to work. It's not the best way. Nice. Nice job. So, there's so three you're different... insulting him. You're making fun of him. Yeah. That thing you cannot reflect at. There's three different things he throws. I might try to beat him with just the uh, bug catching it. When he goes up top middle, you know he's going to do the lightning, so you just hang out up here. So who was the uh, the woman there that was, that was the Zelda. damsel in distress? I believe that was Zelda. Really? Pretty sure, yeah. There's she, seven maidens. She went to the stylist before before she uh, got into this world? Yeah. Got yeah. her hair done? And... That, that's in the opening, if you watch that. So basically, he's already kidnapped the, uh, the seven maidens, and uh, they're uh, basically imprisoned in the dark world. And now I think he's messing with Zelda. How's that sound go? Got him. Oh. <laughs> nice to do that, too. What's that? Just wail on the anime as they were disappearing. Oh, yeah. Never knew how to pronounce that. Sa ha. Let's try it. Sa hasrala? Hasrala. Sure. Not even going to try it. And here's where the really awesome Dark World music debuts for the first time. After this little spiel. Do you have all the songs on a CD? I don't know. I, I don't. I, I like it when I play it, but I don't really go the Temptory route to where it's like I walk around and listen to it on my iPod or in my car. Like, when you're at home cooking? Yeah, I don't really do that. Turn the lights down low, have the girlfriend come over, play the Dark World theme? No, nah, no, it doesn't really set a mood. You should try it. I don't know how well it would go. No way to speed up text here. Ugh, oh, uh, Dan. You, I should have gone with a link, right? Well, or create a, a fun name. Yeah. I think I was doing the intro to the show. You, and don't, want to a, you don't want to insult a, a great character like Link and give him a, a crappy name like Dan. The name Dan has a rich history in video well, games. Okay, Street Fighter. I, I take that Street back. Fighter. The, there's nothing wrong with the name Dan. <laughs> there's, there's several things wrong with your persona as Dan. I... What? I don't you even being know. Dan is a problem. Oh, okay. Okay. So just like some Dan you meet on the street school. He's all right. Yeah, yeah oh, okay. he's all right. All right. I mean, he might have some flaws, but probably not compared to you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We will keep moving. And this next dungeon is exactly where the first dungeon of the light world is. Except for this one is significantly tougher. Don't need that. Here, you have to find a little uh, helper monkey guy to lead you through the shrubs. Yeah, there's two different enemies right there. Yep. These guys were always kind of prone to give you hearts. Uh, these Octorok things usually give you rupees. So you kind of knew who to go after, depending on what you wanted. I wonder how... The, I haven't played it yet. 3D Dot Game Heroes, if they have a pretty wide selection of enemies as well. I don't know, Tim's just been raving about it, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking that game out. Alright. These super weak walls you can usually just break by doing that. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that helps. No respect for old skulls in this tomb. Let's throw them, smash them. This is actually one of the tri trickier areas. Except for maybe that giant arrow on the ground will tell me where to go. <laughs> the beginning of focus testing right here. <laughs> That's the thing, like I'm playing the new Prince of Persia upstairs right now and uh, every environment I go into, every room I go into, they do a flyby. Oh yeah. Show me exactly where to go. It's like, God, stop, please. Yeah. Just game designers, stop doing that. Yep. I get it. The one thing I do hate when Let they... Let me explore, you know, like... Uh. I think it's forgivable, certainly, like, in uh, Ocarina, basically every Zelda game since this, is like, oh, hey, there's my monkey. Um, but, like, let's say you unlock a door, and it shows you the door, and then it pans back to where you are, showing you where you are, like, 
that's that's good. But I mean, showing you what to do before you do it, I think that's a little overkill. I don't remember the monkey either. This game's insane. Oh, there's so much stuff in this game. <laughs> so yeah, you take him up here. You got to keep paying this monkey. I think you got to pay him 100. Yep, 100 rupees. Then he jumps around on these switches and opens it up for you. Ah, yes, now I remember this. Here to save the first princess. This is where they get they start getting kind of tough. Light worlds. Not a cakewalk, but it's it's nothing like these dark world dungeons. You were complaining about the boss in the last world. I I have less trouble with the dark world bosses than I do with, with like that one. That one's really hard. Well not really hard, it's just annoying when you fall down. These are these are pretty manageable. It's the dungeons themselves that the are. The puzzles. Yeah. I think on this one particularly, I always kind of had trouble getting the big key. Yeah, I remember a couple of these dungeons, I'd be like, oh man, I'm never getting past this. I just don't understand how to put it together. Yep. I, I've Nowadays, had... they would have done the huge flyby and showed oh, yeah. you how everything connects. Oh, and... of course. I'm guessing I should probably go down there before I go on the key door. It's a cute little guy. Yeah, can't do anything to him if you attack his head. Okay, this is just... Ah, uh, yeah. yeah this yeah, is yeah. Fairy stuff. So... Came out. I, I've had friends that I've recommended this game to throughout the years, and, you know, I ask them to always kind of check in with their progress so I know how they're doing. And so many people assume that it's going to be over when they're done with the light world. It's right. Like, oh, no, you've got a good chunk of the game to go. Yeah, you're like a quarter of the way. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it's pretty much the exact same format in Ocarina. You do three dungeons, you know, as a, as a kid, and then you have like five or six dungeons as an adult. I hate these things. Get away. Pretty awesome. Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> a phobia of flying skulls. <laughs> I think that's a pretty legit phobia. If yeah, flying no, skulls no. existed, <laughs> I'd probably be pretty afraid of them. These turtles, you can't do a thing to until you get the hammer, which we will be getting. Uh, let's do some of this for now. Oh no. Oh crap, they're coming. Oh no. Oh, you're lucky. I got outsmarted by that wall. <laughs> okay. Some reason I can't turn. <laughs> let's go up here. Luckily, we got that key. God, it's dungeon music. Wait, I think this is the big key. That didn't take long. I don't know why I usually have trouble with that. Did you just set me up there? Was I supposed to be impressed? But you knew what you were doing all I don't along? think so. No, no. I'm just surprised that I didn't totally screw it up. Here comes your phobia again. Oh, God. <laughs> Cannot get out of there quick enough. These are bad, too, because they take your magic away. Yes. But you can sprinkle magic powder on them, and they turn into fairies. All right, so we go up here. Don't have the hammer yet. Let's avoid these guys. Miyamoto loved his turtle enemies. Oh, yeah, he did. All right. These stupid guys. There are a lot of enemies in this game that I just hate dealing with. <laughs> These are one of them. Because, look, you got to jump down there, and the second you get over here, they all swarm it. Okay, got to sprint here. Screw that guy. Should be collapsing, I think. Not. Oh, yeah, there it is. Apparently, I missed a key at some point. Fail. Probably right there. Nope. You got the map? I do have the map. Hopefully, I won't need to use it. Look at this. That's a lot of roofies. <laughs> uh. Did they call them rupees in the first one? Pretty sure they did, yeah. I don't know if it was just a number or if it had a name. Nope. Yeah. Oh, in the first first one? Like yeah. NES? NES, I think they might have just been a number. This one, they definitely call it rupees. All right, I could use my key there, but I'm pretty sure to get the hammer, I need to go over here first. They build that bridge again pretty quick. Ah, the music. Oh, 
like, uh, what was that Disney movie, Fantasia? Kind of has a similar tone to the, the yeah. score. Nice. I'm pretty maxed out on rupees, bombs, and arrows right now. I'm all right with that. When did the Gorons appear? Was that in Ocarina, or were they before that? I think Ocarina was the first time, because they're definitely nowhere around Death Mountain and this. Um, unless they were in Link's Awakening, which I think was after this and before Ocarina, if I remember right. I liked them in Ocarina, but man, I can't stand those guys now. I like them. I like a Majora's Mask, how you can uh, you can become one and roll around. And I don't know. I don't mind the Gorons. I don't know what it is. I just, I, I just can't stand those guys anymore. Nice job. Hammer. Alright, making pretty good time through this one. This is a pretty tough boss. It's a uh, turtle with a spiked tail that he's prone to hit you with. You said the last boss was tough. He's... I, I'm right afraid. In this dungeon, you said, ah, he's not going to give me any problems. You're just trying to set me up to be impressed. I'm saying not as much trouble as that one. That one, that last one you saw, terrifies me. I... I Hated that thing since I was a kid. This one, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, not too afraid of this one, but he's, he's not a cakewalk. This will move. Well, if you get hit by him, you gotta buy me lunch tomorrow. I'm gonna get hit by him. I'm just telling Then you gotta buy me lunch tomorrow. Hmm. All right. What, happen what happens if I, if I beat him without getting hit? Nothing. Awesome. You already said all right to the, the lunch part. Why would I agree to anything past that? You got a good point there. We didn't say what lunch was. Maybe a couple slices oh of bread. Oh god, or I'm gonna have a horrible lunch. <laughs> All right, so let's try. Actually, I think I can just go this way now. Okay, remember right. The third one is a switch. Yep, but I need to put this guy on it. Ah, uh, just figuring out all these puzzles and uh, it's just brilliant. So yeah. many different puzzles in the dungeons. Yeah, and, and the first time you go through this game, it is definitely not this quick. Like, you know, you can, you can beat this game in under ten hours if you played it before, but uh, your first time through, it's not a cakewalk at all. It takes a long time. You remember these guys? You move up, they move down. Yep. So you got to do this. It's a great design. It's also a little bit of a design misstep where they have to give you all those arrows every time you go in there. Yeah, you know, it just kind of tips you off a little bit. Like, I love the puzzle itself, but... Yeah. Um, it'd be nice if you could just... You didn't have to have the, that reminder when you went in there. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty... Uh, they're not very subtle about that. Like, you go into a boss fight where you need to use arrows, and you're going to get 95 arrows before yeah. you go in there. Yep. I have noticed, though, that, like, uh, you know, you look at games like Ocarina and, you know, more modern games, and if there's a certain thing you need to, to beat a boss, you're going to get kind of a replenishing mm -hmm. supply of that, whether it's, like, grass that grows that you can cut and get more or something. Um, but in this one, you run out of arrows, you got to find another way to beat him. You know, even in, like, Ocarina, there'd be pots all over the arena. There's nothing like this. That's how it should be. Yeah. Like, maybe you get an advantage, but... Uh... Overall, yeah, you should be able to do it different ways. Yep. Not forced into one design yep. with limited supplies. Looks like I am missing a key. So I will be going back up here. <laughs> nice memory. I would have ran uh. right there. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep my laser sword. I'm going to keep calling it a laser sword. Yeah, there's nothing laser about that, man. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're breaking science by calling it a laser. You can't spin it like that. Unless someone can prove me wrong that a laser can spin through time and space. So I, oh, I see a treasure chest down there. I bet that's the key. Get rid of these jerks. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, who, who designed this dungeon? Like, <laughs> hey, let's just put this bouncer right here to just mess with our enemies that are going to be here. It'd be hilarious. So, I don't know if we've been down here. Let's try that out. Wait, I have gone down there, haven't I? Yes. Okay, we're not going to go there then. How about we look at our map? So 
I need to get over here. He's pointing to the right side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't our, see me point. Our readers that aren't watching through the window here. <laughs> our voy voyeuristic readers. <laughs> All right. Let's try this. Um, I don't know if I should fall there. That's where I need to be, I think. Huh. There's only one way over there, man. I'm gonna fall down here and see what happens. Fail. Been down here. Oh god. <laughs> Third time. Okay. I always felt kind of bad for him when he'd fall, he'd make that sound. I don't know if that's supposed to be his voice or just like the cartoon falling oh, sound effect. Oh, I always took it as his voice. I was like, oh, that poor guy. But then when he'd land, he'd be fine, you know? It's like, oh, yeah. suck it up, buddy. <laughs> All right, we're going to figure this out. Go over here. I need to be up there. Oh, this is going to bug me. I can't go down there. That's where I need the key. Oh boy. This is going to be the next six parts of Super Replay is me trying to figure out how to get up there. It'd be great. I'll be the first to comment. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I'm going to try something. Every time these guys respond. Alright, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Okay. Been up here, this is where the floor. I think I might know where I need to go. I don't know. Oh god. That was almost a disaster. Okay. Let's try this. This one push. No. Starting to feel like deja vu a little bit. Yeah. Groundhog's Day. As many times as I've played this game, there's still the occasional thing like this that just gets me. How many times have you played it? I bet I've beaten it uh, 25 to 30 times. Wow. Yeah. I beat it in five hours once. That's the fastest I've done. I'd probably say I was a, probably around five times, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's so hard. Hard to remember. What was the last time you think you played it? <laughs> It was when I played the Ages games. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, every once in a while I get on the that Zelda kick, the classic Zelda kick, where I just want to sit oh, down yeah. and play a classic Zelda game. Yep. I am kind of stumped right here. Pretty sure killing all these turtles isn't going to solve my problems, but uh, it takes me right now. That was aggression. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like there's a room to the right. Uh, I'm pointing to the right on the first floor here that I can move over there to, but I can't for the life of me figure out how I would get there unless I go down to the basement. Ooh. Running out of options. I know. I'm going to try something stupid. I'm pretty sure you can't fall down this hole and survive, but I will try it. Oh, wait, it made a sound, yeah. Wait, it made the sound! Aw, not supposed to make that sound if you do something bad. I think uh, I think they got exactly what they wanted out of that puzzle. <laughs> Just want to be jerks. Yeah, aw. <laughs> that was the sound you made. <laughs> well, those guys didn't respond. Yeah, you said every time. Uh, not that, so. That guy was over there. There's got to be one of these I didn't fall down. You fell down that I'm one. I'm going to do this again. Maybe there's a way up. No, you did. You just did that again. I went down that side. The right. This is with the skeletons, isn't it? Yeah, but it's oh, that yeah, other yeah, one. Yeah. So now I'm up here. Okay, please tell me this is it. Okay, we're going to fall down here now. Oh my 
that. Hmm. Did you explore everything down there? Um, hang on, let me try this. I think this might be it. This is it. Right here. That's right. I forgot there's a second portal. Check this out. Sprinkle magic powder. Very. Yep. Look at this. Okay, finally. I love these guys. Yeah. You should bring them in, back in the new ones. Yeah. Could do some great stuff in 3D space with movement like that. Yeah. I remember they had the, uh, in Ocarina, they had, like, your shadow self, but he didn't, like, exactly mimic your movements. Oh, these guys, they split. Ugh. All right. The last hour of Ocarina is just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. This is where I need to be. I'm willing to bet there's a key for me. Oh, there's a map, but I think if I bomb this left wall, that's how I get to that key. Hope those guys don't respawn. Key. Bingo. Awesome. Alright, didn't get caught up too long. Now you're going to avoid bombing that right wall. Uh, there, that's a bunch of fairies in there, and I am pretty much stocked up, so I do not need to get that. I hate these tiny guys, so I'm just going to hammer into here. Out of here. And we should be good to go. After we do this again. Apparently somebody replaced the statue. <laughs> the be janitor. If you, uh, if you return to a room really quickly and you see someone in there resetting yeah, it. Yeah, some janitor <laughs> just yeah. like pushing it over there. A cart full of skulls. <laughs> it's... <laughs> They actively look away from you when you're trying to fight them. Uh. Alright, get over here, up here. What are those things? It seems they're like their purpose in life is kinda lame. <laughs> Should be pretty close to the boss. Can you imagine being the guy in the end with only one person to talk to? <laughs> It'd kind of suck. Just no links coming after you. Or do you think they just yell the entire time? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe sing together. I always like the guys in Serious Sam, that uh, the headless guys that somehow are screaming at you as they sprint at you. I mean, how do these things stay alive? I don't know. Is there like food drops that come in? Maybe they should have like M. Night Shamalama Ding Dong That's direct one of the next games and like add stupid reasons to everything. Some big stupid twist ending to a Zelda yeah. game. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the series needs. Plot twist. I'd, I'd play it. <laughs> I guess the series has had some twist when uh, Tetra ends up being Zelda in uh, Wind Waker. And you just ruined it for everybody. Oh, just ruined the game from 2003. Here's this guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. I'm going to get hit. I'm just telling you now. So don't, uh, no celebration if I get hit. You've, you've beat him 25 times. Doesn't mean he's easy. He's going to do this tail whip. Oh, missed it. You got to chip away his mask. I have two bombs left. Just keep in mind. These things split off. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ah! Take it. Okay. Oh, out of bombs. So I need to get up close here. Hammer him. So far, so good. Look at that. Don't get greedy. Actually, get greedy. Go run right in there. Oh! That was close. Oh my god. Oh, right. there it is. Free lunch for me. <laughs> I'm just... Now, yeah, now you got you're Got a fairy. Done. Got a fairy. I'll be safe. Yeah, once you got me with that first hit, it was pretty much game over. Is that how it is with achievements with you, too? Like, once, like, you really you play hard to get that achievement point, but once it's gone, I'm like... Just terrible. Yeah, and then you just suck. I think that's how it works. <laughs> nice. Wow, you're just flying through this. Yep. 
So done with the whole light world, done with the first one here. And uh, wait, we'll start making our way towards this next dungeon before we end this segment. The next one is down in the swamp. What was your favorite dungeon? Hmm. I know my least favorite is the Ice Palace, which is the fifth dungeon in the Dark World. Um, I really like the one, it's the fourth one in the Dark World. Uh, we'll be getting to it, um, where you fight Blind. Do you remember him? He's this guy that lives in the basement of this house. And uh, it's the one where you take the girl from the jail cell, and you take her up, and as soon as she's exposed to light, she turns into this demon with a spinning head. Nope. I thought that one was really, really cool. But we'll be getting to that. Yeah, it's all coming back as you play it, but... I mean, I mean, that rabbit took me by surprise. I was like, what <laughs> just happened? Yeah, if you hit not at all on any of these, it just repeats the entire thing. So you're not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. All right. So another dungeon down. And this is before I have the uh, magical flute. Actually, you know what? That's probably a good thing I could do right now before we end the segment is try to get the flute. You ever notice in the artwork in a lot of the Zelda games, it reflects modern day life, like, uh, or our world more than Link's world, like the gorillas uh, on the, the shrine you were just at. And then there's a lot of times there's just like normal birds and stuff like that. But then when you're actually in his world, everything's really exotic and alien. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of like in Star Wars having the uh, Millennium Falcon. Like, Falcon's an Earth bird, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, technically, doesn't Star Wars exist in our universe, just really far away? And maybe. Way in yeah. The past? yeah. Implying they're from Earth. All right. On the way out of this. So, see, I need to go the opposite way the arrow tells me now. Thank her. Oh, God. That's a terrifying <laughs> thing. I love that. It's terrifying. <laughs> I hate that thing. It's up to no good. Yeah, that here. species will survive. <laughs> I don't know about that tentacle beast. Now we have the hammer, so we can actually explore the rest it of the dark Seems like world. they're going the way of the dodo. <laughs> so we are going to be going dead left. Use Pegasus boots, I swear. Still my favorite item in any game ever. Hmm. Just using it constantly. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it changed the game. Unlimited. Remember these uh, trees? The ones with the eyes, you poke it, shoots a bomb at you. Slow down. Ooh, and then you can talk didn't to see it. that very often in this game. Oh god, he wants to talk. <laughs> Jeez. So in the light world, um, we, we kind of did this in segment one, you go in here and there's just some little elfin dude sitting on a tree trunk playing a flute for a bunch of animals. Then he disappears. And so here's this guy, this is what happened to him after he came to the dark world. So, he's going to give me a shovel to find his flute. <laughs> Take that however you want. And I was telling Tim, like, once you get the flute, you don't get the shovel anymore. I wish you could have kept the, the shovel, because you can dig up hearts and do whatever with this. And I may be wrong about this, but I think the Game Boy Advance version of this actually lets you keep the shovel. Yeah, yeah. And it made a couple little differences, too. So here's the guy before he turns uh, into that weird stumpy guy. All right, so the flute is buried in one of these patches here. How, how many how many digs do you think it's going to take me to find the flute? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. That was close. What? <laughs> two. Two. Yeah. Two. I played that Elmo game for replay. Oh and, god, uh, that was fun. I got watch. pretty good with the number two. <laughs> so play this. All right, now I'm thinking about. M. Night Shyamalama doing, uh, what if, what if, what director would you like to see a, do a Zelda movie? I I'm going to say Miyazaki. I don't think I want to see a Zelda movie. I would love to see Miyazaki do Zelda. I don't even, I don't even know. I, I couldn't name one. I, I just don't want to see that movie, really. You wouldn't watch a Miyazaki Zelda film? I would watch it. I just don't know if this game's story really lends itself to, to that. It's all over the place, as we were just talking about. Like, I mean, every every one kind of gives you something different. I mean, you could have the director working with Miyamoto, and you know, you don't have to reveal everything. It can be just as, as you know, 
sparsely told, but man, yeah. I think it, I think it'd be great. It, it really depends on who is on it. I mean, we, we still have a really bad record of video game movies. Prince of Persia looks to have some better production values. That's not quite out yet, so we'll see. Um, but uh, this, this will be the last thing we do in this segment, is we'll actually activate Flute's powers by playing it here. It changes weather and patterns. Nope, it somehow crushes this thing. <laughs> and a duck. I swear it's a duck. I know it's supposed to be a bird or something. It looks like a damn duck. Um, yep, that's a duck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got a big beak. Yeah. It's like a pelican and a duck. <laughs> and so now, this is very handy. Anywhere in the light world, I can play this little tune. This guy picks me up and whisks me off to wherever I want to go. And uh, when we pick up the next segment, we will be going in here, but in the Dark World version, to check out the second dungeon of the Dark World. So thanks for watching. Uh, Reiner, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. That was a blast. And uh, we will be back with part three soon. Thanks for watching.